Welcome back to another episode of Selfords from the Field podcast. I'm your host, Kendall Dirksen. Spring is in the air, and with that, my Twitter feed is filling up with more photos of farmers hitting the fields. I'm itching to get out in a tractor and get some seeds in the ground, but we're not quite going yet. Last year, I was actually able to take over some rented ground on my family farm in southern Ontario, and I grew my first crop of soybeans. So this year, I'll be growing my first corn crop, as well as adding uh, some more acreage. So I am super excited to see what this season has in store. Our planters aren't rolling yet, but when this podcast was being recorded, the guys at Ivers Farms were kicking off their 2023 planting season in Illinois. If you've never heard of Ivers Farms, you just need to go to YouTube and check out their channel. Uh, They're posting great content every week, and they recently purchased a 40-foot Selford Halo VRT. So that's what we're talking about in this episode. Selford's brand manager, Tara Kajewski, and the Dirty Selford rep, Keith Belt, sit down with Reese Ivers and discuss uh, his experience with the VRT so far. Let's give it a listen. Says looking good. I haven't been down there. Keith was there, though. He rode with him. How'd it look, Keith? It's looking awesome. He might be running just a hair deep. But there's more, there's a few washes in these fields too that uh, it's just doing a fantastic job filling them up. I mean, it's it, the soil particle size is ideal and I mean, it's smooth as silk. So, I mean, it's, I think he's probably doing just right, really. Oh, good deal. Yeah, I could see it from the top of the hill, but I was trying to get the planter ready and everything. So I never really didn't go down and check her out. Uh, I, I don't see a thing in the world wrong with it. Beautiful day to get out there. Oh, yeah, um, it's like 80 degrees and sunny today. It's nice. Well, you know, we're just going to kind of dive right into it. I, I wanted to, you know, Reese, there's some people that might be listening into this and they, they don't know uh, about Ivers Farms as well as we do here. Um, so I wanted to kind of get you to kind of introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your background, uh, your family operation, where you're located. Um, dive right into that a little bit for us. Okay, yeah, I'm Reese Ivers. I don't really know what generation farmer you would call me. <laughs> I'm third in this location, but I got an aunt that can did genealogy, a great aunt, traced us back farming all the way to the 1500s in Ireland. So it just oh my it just keeps going. Yeah, but right now we are located main spots in southeast Illinois. We also farm in southwest Indiana, uh, 11,000 acre far- farm. We're just Corn and soybeans, we have done wheat in the past. We're not doing it right now. Uh, a lot of different farming practices and tillage practices. We got no-till. We got conventional till. We got minimum till. We'll rip them. And, you know, like, I'm at a field right now getting ready to get started. It's a no-till field on some sand. It's uh, those on the farm that's related. You got me and my dad, Dennis, and I also have a brother, Garrett. And then I have an uncle George and a cousin David, and we're uh, we're all in the we're the family that all farms together. Um, <laughs> got a YouTube channel which you can come check us out if you want to learn more about us. But that's uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. Thank you. Thanks for that overview. Yeah, your channel is really awesome, and you know a big thing that I've seen and and heard from your channel specifically is how educational it is. And it really opens up a lot of uh, people's eyes to the different practices. And, and you really dive into the mechanics of, of the machinery too. And people really seem to draw into that. So that's, that's exciting for us, obviously as a manufacturer to kind of see, see those types of responses. Um, But, you know, we, we chatted about a year, almost a year ago, um, and we were talking about tillage solutions. So I wanted to kind of hear from you on what specific challenges were you or things that you were looking for to get a new tillage tool that to help address with getting a new tillage tool. And what led you to look into Selford potentially as a, a tillage option for you? Yeah, I was, I was happy when you reached out because, uh, we do do a lot of tillage. We'll do some in the fall and some in the spring. And we have two high-speed planters 
the corn and soybeans and you know how it is nowadays sometimes it's hard to get enough help so we needed a tillage tool that could do, that could do what we needed to do and still hold up be built strong enough to hold up but going at high speeds and the southward being able to go what's it able to go up to 14 mile per hour and then you get that at 40 foot that's something that really helps stay in front of our 260 foot planters and we'll plant 10 11 mile an hour so we needed something like that and we have tried a lot of different tillage tools in the past we had turbo tills from case ih for a whole bunch of years here in the recent years and those worked really good but uh, we would always have to beef up the baskets or something it's just you know hammering on them acre after acre trying to go nine or ten just kind of warm down a little bit then we switch over to the new deer one which is like a norwood i think and uh it also has a lot of, one year through we had a lot of a lot of frame issues uh frame was cracking everything then we switched over to uh the one that case ih has too and it's built really healthy and it held up really good but with yeah. it it kind of has uh uh some issues sometimes balling up so when you contact me about the the Salford, the thing I liked about it was the VRT, the Halo VRT, is that you can adjust those discs how you want them. I was once I got researching after we talked to one another, I thought that might be a good solution for us. Or maybe if we're in conditions, maybe there's too heavy residue, maybe too thick of sand. Well, may, if you can adjust your blades, you can just adjust it for the conditions and keep going and. Mm -hmm. We demoed one last fall and didn't have any of that balling up trouble. And even I took it through some sandy sand. It was about like going through a beach. And that's something that's hard to get through with anything. And I did plug up once, but then I just adjusted my angles a little less aggressive on the blades. And right through her, she went. So You put us through the, that big test when you were demoing it out in the fall. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a that was a big test. We had a twenty footer, one of those, and then we also had a case forty foot. We just split about every field to see how they did against one another. And the neighbors even had a, a what, the John Deere tillage tool that the whole gang adjusts. I can't remember what the name of that tool is offhand. And we even split that every three passes. And I think the sulfur. I even you know, driving across it now and whatnot, it uh, left it a little smoother for sure. And there's even a couple of fields you can tell right where it split. I don't know if maybe it's because I was in deeper or what, but there's, we're early in the spring, so the weeds are starting to get little and thick. And that 20 foot strip, they're just, there's not quite as many weeds as in the 40 foot. It might, of course, I was running that one. Dad was running the case. Maybe it was all an operator. He might not think so, though. <laughs> Good thing Dad's not on this call right now, eh? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I better not better not let him know about it either. I don't want him to listen in. He might uh, <laughs> he might have something else to say about that. That's for the ne that's for the next episode. Going head to head. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um. So. That that's really interesting. Like I know you and I talked a little bit about the VRT when we when we first started uh, chatting, and um, we had Keith come out. Uh, Keith's our territory sales manager in your area, um, kind of to help really determine the appropriate tool for you. Um, Keith, just to bring you in here, how did you determine that the VRT would have been the best for Reese? Was it because of his quick explanation on the different types of tillage practices that they handle or was there other mm -hmm. other factors that helped you determine that that would be something for him to think about yeah you know tara that's always been one of our biggest challenges and before you know our Salford products when you were trying to pre-qualify a customer and help them make the right decision you know you had to be really cautious and 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 ask a lot of questions and find out what they what they want to accomplish and and the one thing that would get us in trouble, or not necessarily to get us in trouble, but the one option we didn't have was being able to change on the farm. So, you know, we had a lot of different customers over the years that, you know, we would work really hard to, to get them into a category, whether it was one of our independent series, I-1100 or 2200 or 4100 or 4200. And the first thing you do is you sit down and, you know, 
me and Reese, we got in touch with each other. I uh, went and visited with him, actually rode around in the combine with him. And I just asked him a bunch of questions. And just like what he said, you know, they farm everything. Uh, they're, you know, 11,000 plus acres and they go from river bottom ground to highly erodible hill ground. And that is the BRT to a T. I mean, that's the whole concept behind that tool is Salford finally has a high speed, high productivity tillage piece that can go from two degrees to 15 degrees of aggressiveness and give these operators like Reese and his family the power to hook the one tool and go, Reese, how far is it to Robinson? What are you, about 45 minutes to an hour when you're driving the tractor? Oh, man, on a tractor, that's a good question. It's 35 minutes in the car, so, yeah, it, it's about an hour. It takes over an hour. An hour and a half, place, maybe. So, yeah. 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 So, you know, Tara, you think about it. I mean, when you back into the shed at the first of spring here, and you got plenty of time, you know, you can go back to the farm and get a field cultivator if you need it to fill in some ruts or take out some heavy weeds. But these guys, you know, like this year, perfect example, you know, we're running a little bit behind. We had a little bit of heavy moisture. So we're, you know, weather's right. They're wanting to run. When you can drop that single hitch pan, drive an hour and a half and know that you've got the confidence that when you pull in on that field, you've got a tool that you can pretty much handle any situation you're going to encounter. I mean, I think, Reese, that you'll agree with me. That's a pretty powerful feeling. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the name of the game is efficiency. If you got something that can go over every acre you got just by hitting a hydraulic switch, just make a few adjustments, that's, uh, that's a big deal. And so we talked about that. He told me, you know, he gave me his different scenarios. And, I mean, I pretty much figured out right then, based on my knowledge and experience with Salford over the years, that, you know, he needed to leapfrog the I-Series. He needed the tool like the BRT, and it was a brand new tool, pretty fresh on the market. Hadn't really been released to the market yet. Uh, we didn't really go for a full release on it till last fall, actually, so it was still relatively uh, brand new and not full well known yet. And I think Reese and them's experience and, and their ability to demo it like we was able to, you know, help get the word out on it even more. And it just was a divine intervention. I think, you know, the good Lord meant for it to happen. And we got together and, you know, these guys put it through its paces. We were able to bring it out to them. Uh, they had the perfect tractor for it. They had a 380 horsepower front wheel assist. And it was just a match made, uh, match made in heaven, so to speak. And, and he was able to keep up with his dad and they were able to do side by side comparisons. And uh, you couldn't ask for a better demo situation. Yeah, that, that's really yeah. cool that you were able to do those those comparisons, Reese, and um, and yeah, having all the details ironed out for you there with with Keith, and it really does make sense that the the versatility factor was such a a huge proponent to the interest of this uh, the VRT. And would you say then that the versatility tool of that tool from that quick pass comparison right there and then was what led you to make that purchase decision because initially it was just going to be a demo trying it out and like he said we were just getting into the market in your area so we hadn't even um touched in that and you made an order that fall saying we need this um so what what really made that like final quick call for you to be able to to get that order put in well the Before. proof is really in the field it's just uh i like the versatility like everybody's saying but uh I pulled, it, I think it's rated up to 14, so that's why I pulled it. If that's what they say can do, we're going to test it out, and it's uh, test, pass the test, and I don't know if it's the double baskets on the back or what. It just left it smooth and left it looking beautiful and turned over some the right amount of residue as we wanted, and it's just the ease of what you can adjust it is so nice. You know, a lot of different tools. You're in and out of the cab all the time, and then... You get it the way you want it, then conditions change, and then you got to get back out. Then you're not real sure. Then you're like, well, do I want to take the time and stop or not? But here you just got your right hand just sitting there playing with it the whole time till it's exactly perfect all the time. And, you know, sometimes conditions can change from one end of the field to the, to the other, and it's really nice not having to stop on half of a pass and maybe 
take it out or put it in a little bit. You can just do it all from in the cabs, the main thing. And it just it looked like it was built healthy, but we're not going to have any issues with it, you know, pulling in two when we're trying to trying mm-hmm. to do what we're trying to do. So I just was impressed no with downtime. it enough that we thought we needed one of those and we thought it would it would solve a lot of our problems that we were having with our other tillage equipment. Did you get a remote with yours? I can't remember now. Uh, the one we demoed had a remote. No, we did not do the 40-foot does not have the remote. Since we already had six outlets on the tractor we had, we decided to decide to go with that option. That makes sense. It's it's nice to have now, that option. I clarify, you're talking it, about the joystick option. Yes. So yeah, and that joystick was pretty, it's a pretty neat option, especially for a guy that don't have six outlets, so you can put it on about any tractor you want to. Mm-hmm. So, Keith, feel free to, to to make any questions if you have any in here, but um, I have uh, another question just based on other farmers that might be facing similar challenges to you. Would they, Based on your experience, would you recommend... Um, recommend this uh vrt to other farmers your neighbor yeah yeah i mean anything that we're willing to put our our hard-earned money down on is something i'd recommend to somebody else at least from our experience last fall i thought it was a Mm -hmm. great tool i thought it did a great job and then uh, of course we're just gonna keep learning more and more about it now that we got the 40 foot it just got started today so far, so good from what I hear, but I haven't been by any, so I guess I can't, I can't really swear to it yet. But it sure sounds like it's doing good from what he said and what from Jay said, who's the one running it right now. Um, where is Jay running it right now? What type of field? Uh, it's a clay field that has. Well, he started in an all clay field, and then he's got one that's got a little bit of muck at the bottom. Um, and then he's got he's going to be mostly in clay today and that's mostly what we in the fall we'll work all kinds of soil types in the spring some of them we will some of them we won't like there's okay. some fields last year that's real heavy dirt we use the sulfur on it in the fall and then we'll just plant straight into it this spring oh, okay. and then the sand the sand we like to stay away from unless from working unless we have some ruts or something like that we have to fill in but uh when we were able to harvest them then we didn't have any of those problems so most of those will be no-till so he's gonna be mostly on the clay for the most part at least to start out with to start out and then hope the well, weather continues oh, to every, stay this way yeah every plan we make may may change in a in a couple hours we yeah. do change our minds a lot <laughs> see next episode <laughs> yeah yeah um, I think we might have lost Keith, but I did have a question for you of, you know, looking forward to the future, um, plans for Iver Farm, Ivers Farms, YouTube expansions, do you guys, or et cetera, do you have anything um, that you guys are, are looking to, to achieve over the next uh, next year with uh, the Ivers Farms um, operation? Oh, uh, you know, as far as the farming wise, we're always looking to expand where the opportunities right we don't want to grow just for growing sake we're kind of i like i like fields that are fun to farm if you know what mm-hmm. i mean i like high, highly productive and you know not all cut up and washes and all that but but you know if we have an opportunity to pick up some more ground to rent we're always looking for that there is a there is a 80 acre field that's coming up for sale this year. We got our eye on, which, you know, never know how that goes that we may or may not be able to get in, a, in an auction. Uh, mm-hmm. as far as like the social media thing goes with, uh, we're uh, just going to keep putting out content. We always have a Sunday morning episode. So at least, at least we're reliable when we put it out in the fall, I'll, I'll have a Wednesday too. And that's been, it's, been a slow and steady grow we always are Mm -hmm. picking up subscribers and getting a few more views each video but it's not we haven't really had a go viral moment i guess it's just kind of been slow slow and steady progress on that front 
it's probably just waiting for that sulfur to get out into the field at your place this spring for the viral moment to hit, I'm sure. That might be. <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> or we're going to have to do the crossover with Larson's and, and uh, get you guys competing with the 5200 and the VRT. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry about dropping off on you guys there. My phone actually got too hot. I had to shut it down. I guess it was all the all the conversation we were having there. But uh, yeah, that's one of our goals for this fall is to try to get Reese and these guys a 5200 to try. Uh, that's definitely in my playbook. And it's just so everybody listening to the podcast in the southern Illinois, southwest Indiana region. Good Lord willing, we will have at least a 16-foot 5200 operational and uh, for demos and stuff this fall, so keep that in mind. And we're going to be doing demo yeah. a demo of that at the Farm Progress show too, right, Keith? Hopefully. Uh, Halo VRT and the 5200 should be in the field at Farm Progress. Oh, so, nice. So if we could convince uh, before... Reese to come, for, come down for that too, then he could, we could see it side by side. Yeah, and, uh, that'd be interesting, be interesting to see, that's for sure. It's a good-looking tool. I like the looks of it. Looks like a good uh, alternative to a ripper to me. Well, uh, we're starting to get a little bit more traction here in the area with that tool, and and it's definitely something that's got a home in this in this river bottom, you know, tri-state area where we're dealing with a lot of different river situations where residue float off is a big problem for these guys. Uh, 5200 is just a more aggressive solution. It's high speed, uh, more efficient. And it's, and that's one of the comments I was going to make before I got disconnected there and got back online. There's several things that a farmer never has too much of, Tara. He never has too much yield. He never has too much time. He never has too much horsepower. And he never has too much uh, tillage tool. He always wants to be wider. And the VRT kind of hits all those aspects. You know, efficiency... For these guys, is paramount nowadays, and, you know, if you do the quick math on it, you know, if he can maintain 10 miles an hour with a 60-foot planter, that guy's plant 600 acres a day, and that's not a real hard day, right, Reese? I mean, that's getting up at, getting in the tractor at 7 o'clock and, and getting out by 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and you've got 600 acres planted. So, you know, the halo, where it fits into the scenario, is if you can do a 10-hour a day, and just average 10 hours or 10 mile an hour with a 40 foot tool making a 38 foot pass, you're doing 380 acres. And if you can bump that speed up, which you can, and you know, go to that 14 mile an hour speed limit, you know, or whatever you can pull with the horsepower and the field you got, you know, that's just that extra amount of efficiency that's so paramount for these guys to have. And I feel like that as much as anything. It, it just comes in a complete package. The VRT, you know, it's got the double 14 rolling baskets, which I'm sitting here. I'm actually trespassing today. I'm down here in the Western field, just west of Reese and them shop. And, you know, we're watching this thing run. And the finish is unbelievable here. Uh, first pass in the spring. And the double rolling baskets are just conditioning this oil up beautifully. He's done, you know, the... I don't know. I've only been here for about 45 minutes to an hour. We've already got, I'd say we probably got close to 180 acres done at least. And, you know, he's moving on to the next field. And the transport width, that's one thing we haven't talked about yet. I don't think, unless you guys mentioned it while I was gone. But No, we didn't. You know, I'm, I'm following this guy down the road. He's pulling a 40-foot tillage tool, and he's only 11 six wide, less than 12 feet wide. So... I don't know, Reese. Will we be able to get that across the Cannonball Bridge or St. Francisville? No, but it's darn close. We've talked about it. <laughs> ah. That is a nice feature. How? Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that too. It does fold up nice and narrow, and that's that's nice. Yeah, especially with the, with all those acres and going all over the place like you have, that makes a lot of sense. The to have that narrow feature it makes it easy. I think the 20 foot might actually fit across it because it, it's got slightly smaller tires, don't it, on the mainframe? It does. I mean, that's one of the nice things. There's a lot of commonality between the Halo platforms from the 20 foot to the 40 foot. But one thing we do change is when we get to the 30 foot working widths, we go to a three piece frame and, uh, and the tires, you go to 
I believe these are 825 mm -hmm. uh, flotation tires, so they are wider, just so that they can accommodate that extra size of that machine. But the uh, 25 foot, the 20 foot, those two units, they run a uh, 6025 tire, which is significantly more narrow. And they're only two section machines. They split in the middle. And uh, so they're able to get by with a little bit smaller tire. But, you know, the transport width is basically about the same. We do use uh, an offset dish wheel. And so we're still within the tel we're still within the turn signals. So we're able to maintain that less than 12 foot transport width, but just barely. And I, I you know, it just, it's amazing to watch, you know, you got, very rarely can you see a 40-foot tool go down the road and be the same width or narrower than the tracks on the tractor in front of. And that's nice because sometimes we got we got to go down some narrow roads and some of them are kind of busy. And the narrower you can get, the better. Yeah. Less worry there on the whole transportation there. That's awesome. Well, I don't have any more questions right now. I did what was going to ask Reese and and. Uh, Keith, if you guys have any closing remarks for listeners for the upcoming season or advice that you would provide, um, you know, Keith, you probably are going to say, you know, everyone get out and try and check out a demo. But yeah, if you have any any advice for the season or closing remarks, either of you. Um, I would like to comment on how good so far the Salford company has been to work with, because last fall, I think we all know how difficult it's been to get parts or new equipment to come in when it's supposed to come in. And you got and I was told last fall that they would be here for this spring. I thought, well yeah, we'll we'll see. <laughs> but Salford definitely delivered on their promise because it came in either the last week of February or first week of March, one of the two. Plenty plenty of time for us to use and that uh I think that says a lot when you when you make a promise and you fulfill it. That's that's good to see, especially nowadays, which I know some of that's beyond the company's control, but you guys said it'd be here this spring, and here it is. As far as the well, life for this season, I uh, I don't know. Good <laughs> luck, everybody. <laughs> it's, it's, always, it's always changing, and uh, no matter where you're at, farming's always a little different. Just, uh, just want to wish everybody good luck on – Good luck on this upcoming season. Hopefully it all turns out pretty good for everyone. Well, I appreciate that, Reese. And it was fun working with you guys. And, and all I can say is, is that uh, you were a big part of that, making that happen, you and your dad and your family, because uh, you made your minds up pretty quick. And uh, when, you, when you got a farmer that sees what he likes and likes what he sees and uh, says, yeah, I need it, get it, you know, let's go. And a dealership like H&R AgriPower there in Pol uh, Preston, Indiana, you know, uh, we made that process happen and uh, we were able to meet that meet that deadline. And we really appreciate the opportunity to work with you guys. The, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a wonderful year again. Uh, anytime you can get up in the morning, put your feet on the ground and go to work and, and in the industry that like we're working in, uh, it's a good day. And we're definitely going to have our challenges. I know a lot of the, you know, Northern Plains guys are dealing with weather still. And, and you hear about this thing they call snow and ice. And they're waiting for it to melt off so they can get to their field. So God bless those guys. But everybody just be safe. You know, watch out for each other. And everybody that's driving up and down these highways, give these guys the respect and the courtesy they deserve. And uh, just just watch yourselves and have a wonderful spring. Thank you. And oh yeah, Reese. Well, plug the already South rep. Let everybody know if they want to who to call if they need a demo or anything. I'd be happy to do it. Okay, we'll do. Everybody loves demos. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> they work. Keep Keith busy this this uh, season. <laughs> Tara, do you still have snow up there where you're at? Oh no, it is. Sun is shining. It is nice today. It actually feels like spring finally. We just did a podcast last week with uh, our sales guy that is out west, and he got dumped with a bunch of snow, so they could keep it out there. We yeah. are drying up, and the the sunshine is finally here with what we needed. <laughs> I think it'd be cool, Tara, if you got Chet on, just call Chet and ask him, because I think they're in the part of Minnesota. I think southeast Minnesota and... Uh, 
eastern North to South Dakota. I see Southeast Minnesota. They kind of got cleared off. They're in that Wisconsin, Iowa area. It's it's pretty nice there. But I think you travel just a little bit west and north, and uh, those guys are still waiting for the snow to get gone. If I ain't mistaken. I just looked so at the nice weather for where he's say. at. It's pretty warm where he is right now, but it's it's probably just starting to melt for him. But no, this is awesome. I I appreciate you guys with the taking the time, and I'm looking forward to seeing more videos come out, Reese, and uh, continuing to work with you. and And maybe we'll be able to come out and and uh, see you at the farm, or, or have you out of farm progress, and uh, get you to see that 5200 in action. Not just let yeah. uh, uh, Chet tell you all about it, but actually let you see it. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Enjoy the day, the sunshine, the weather, and the VRT, and talk to you guys soon. Yep. Everybody, hang on. Get dirty. We'll see you. That is all for today's episode. Thank you for listening. To stay up to date with all things Selford, you can follow Selford Group on social media. And to find out any more information about Selford equipment, such as the Halo VRT, you can visit SelfordGroup.com and learn how Selford can help you field your best. <laughs>